Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of The Best. This will be a series where I feature the most quintessential Singaporean dishes, but it will not be the vanilla food series. This Dishes that I'm going to feature, I have eaten them all my life and I know how to prepare a decent version of it. So last episode, I spent a lot of time explaining the premise and how I was going to do this series. So this episode onwards, I'm just going to jump straight to it. So today I'm here at... Today at where am I? So today I'm here at Bundongki and Bundongki is one of the biggest names in the chicken rice business in Singapore. They, are, they, are, they have been here for like 40 years, they have over 8 outlets or 8 outlets and I'm here at the OG outlet at Balestia. So time to order. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> it's that time to eat. So this is what I ordered. Like I said in the previous episode, I needed to get both breast meat and duck meat to give a fair comparison, right? They don't really sell like ji fan. They sell ji and fan. So I ordered the two person portion, which is ten dollars, and this rice, which is which is some price that I will put in the screen. As you can tell, ten dollars is definitely at the pricey side. So I have a question to ask you guys: Should value be a factor here? Do you think? value like how much chicken you get at price at what right should be a factor that you consider when you talk about the best chicken rice i'm not sure my personal opinion is that as long as it's sort of reasonable that means you don't charge 20 odd dollars for chicken rice right i think it's fine what do you guys think leave it in the comments below because if it is i will start judging value as a factor from now on so yeah time to try the rice actually yeah looks very normal eh? It's chicken rice, I can smell it, but I thought they gave me white rice. It does not have any like yellow hues or anything like that. Try the rice first. Hmm. Interesting. This is the beauty of chicken rice. I definitely can finish the chicken rice like that. But, have to try the chicken. Let's go and breast meat first. Huh? Their sauce, right? They actually bring the chicken out and then they like pour the sauce over. So, so to to. <laughs> Only fine dining does that. Like, like why are people pouring things over the thing at the dining table? Can you cannot pour in the kitchen, man? The only reason why they pour that is just to show you only. Anyway, chicken breast. The chicken breast looks. I don't know how is it looking so tender, but it looks really tender. Like you're fall apart. We are trying. So tender. Wow, why is it so tender? I want to react on the spot, but I'm going to leave the comments till later. Try the drumstick. Oh, the drumstick. One thing I realized is that they didn't have the, they don't have the gelatin for the drumstick. Drumstick. Wow. Before I proceed with the hits and misses. The Bundongki's flavor profile. Again, all these are, I, I believe, shouldn't be an indicator of whether a dish is good or not. All these are personal preference, and I just want to lay out there for you all. So before you're going to try this, you'll know like sort of what you're expecting or what you should be expecting. Hits and misses. Tender chicken. <laughs> I know I said in the previous episode that at this level, tender chicken and tasty chicken and you know, tastiness, right, is a given. But this is just not fair. When you pick up the chicken breast, right? This chicken breast, eh, it's like it's it's like drooping and it's falling apart with it. It's like not natural, right? To it's not natural to have this kind of tenderness. Eh. If you tell me this this was sous vide, right? I will believe you. Tenderness is just next level. It's so tender that I don't think the dark meat is more tender than the white meat. Insane, actually insane. Hit okay, number two. The texture of the rice is very nice. The rice is light, but when you put it in your mouth, right, you can still feel the texture of each grain of the rice before they come together as, you know, almost like a chicken rice ball kind of texture. And it's balanced in such a way that, like, all good chicken rice, right, you can eat this forever. Misses. <coughs> no aspect. You know the gelatin layer that I showed in the previous episode? Or the gelatin layer that's iconic of signature, you know, Hainan chicken, right? I didn't have any of it. Even if they are, you know, doing it correctly in the kitchen, I'm, I didn't get a single piece. 
from the handling of the duck meat right like how i tasted the drumstick right i'm confident that there's aspic but i didn't get any <laughs> so it has to be a miss second miss is they are using this sauce right there is the there is the traditional way of doing Hainan's chicken rice sauce that is if you mix sesame, uh, sesame oil, light soy sauce, chicken fat, chicken stock together to make this sauce but I think it's seasoned a bit too bluntly just tasting like that it's definitely a bit intense on the palate when you have it with the chicken right the sauce just washes away any sweetness or any inherent chickenness that the chicken should have I'm very curious on the brand of soya sauce they are using <coughs> I think the soya sauce is betraying them I think you can use a better light soya sauce or change the balance of what you put inside your sauce still fucking good uh. still fucking good uh. Bundongdi is just one of those places that you you never go wrong on uh. come here 365 days a year right you'll get a good plate of chicken rice so yeah that's all I have for you guys this time thank you so much for watching up to here uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video